This is copper. Doesn't look too alluring, does it? Not quite a nugget of gold, but societies have relied on this humble metal for centuries. And with the world moving towards greener energy, our reliance on copper is only set to grow. Without copper, there is no modern world. Don't believe me? Then let me persuade you. Now, what is copper and what is it used for? Well, copper is an essential industrial metal to our global economy. It's reddish in colour, copper is the third most consumed industrial metal in the world after iron ore and aluminium. So why is it so special? Copper is an excellent conductor of both heat and electricity. It's also very ductile. Copper can be moulded into whatever shape is needed like wires and pipes. It helps too that copper doesn't corrode that much, hence why it's so heavily used in wiring. Now, copper usage is very popular from construction to transport, appliances, electronics and power generation. We're surrounded by copper in our everyday life. In fact, the average family home has more than 90 kilograms of copper, mostly from electrical wiring and plumbing. Copper is so important to the global economy, it even earned itself the title of Dr. Copper. And that's because copper is usually used as a barometer of economic health. When copper prices are rising, it's a sign of a growing global economy. And when copper prices are falling, it's a sign the economy is in bad shape. Now, since copper is so integrated into the global economy, its price can be very volatile. The price of copper shot up in the early 2000s as China went through a major urbanization phase before cratering during the global financial crisis. While the price of copper is often seen as a proxy for immediate global economic health, the future of copper is very interesting. Why? Massive demand and dwindling supply. Over the long term, copper demand is set to take off as our electricity needs grow and emerging countries like India continue to industrialize. S&P Global expects that copper demand could double from 25 million metric tons today to 50 million metric tons by 2035. And that's because electric vehicles, charging stations, batteries, solar and wind power all require way more copper than conventional fossil fuel based technology. Let's consider electric vehicles. EVs need three times as much copper as conventional cars, with the International Copper Association estimating an EV battery pack contains 40 kilograms of copper. But EVs are only a small part of the story in driving future copper demand. Copper is the key metal for transporting renewable energy to homes and businesses. Solar and offshore wind, for example, require two to five times more copper per megawatt of installed capacity than the power that comes from using natural gas or coal. Copper-wise, the thickness of your leg will need to crisscross entire continents to deliver green energy. And that's a whole lot of copper. So this metal is set to play a pivotal role in our green energy transition and the electrification of the world. The International Energy Agency said copper is the cornerstone for all electricity-related technologies. But there is a snag. Supply. Supply could struggle to keep up with this looming demand surge after years of underinvestment and falling copper grades. New copper discoveries have been heading in the wrong direction for more than 12 years. According to the S&P Global Market Intelligence, new copper discoveries have fallen by at least 80% since 2010. Future copper supply is absolutely at odds with demand expectations. Visible copper stocks, for instance, have steadily fallen for years. And copper grades are falling too. Now, lower grades mean higher production costs and this pushes operations to the edge of viability. In Australia, for instance, average copper grades have almost halved in less than 20 years. So where will all this copper come from? Copper mining is quite concentrated. Chile is by far the global leader. The country is home to some of the largest copper mines in the world based on capacity. And Peru is the second largest producer followed by China and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Together, just these four countries produced just over half of the world's copper in 2021. And if you're wondering where Australia sits in the copper production rankings, it's at number six. Australia produced just 4% of the global copper in 2021, but it has the potential to produce more. And that's because Australia holds the second largest reserves of copper behind only Chile. Australia has several large copper mines such as Mount Isa in Queensland and Olympic Dam in South Australia. So with the looming copper shortage, we could see Australia start to boost its copper production. One thing to note here though, is that copper can be recycled. In fact, much of the copper in use today comes from recycled copper. Now, the International Copper Association of Australia 
estimates that of the 550 million tons of copper we've mined since the 1900s, two thirds of that is still in use today. Clearly, there are plenty of advantages to reusing copper. Mining the stuff can be quite energy intensive and recycling copper can help in meeting growing demand. So with all that said, how can you invest in copper? There are plenty of ways to get involved and perhaps the easiest is through exchange traded funds or ETFs. On the ASX, the ETF Global X Copper Mines gives you exposure to a number of global copper miners such as Ivanhoe Mines, First Quantum, BHB and Southern Copper. Now, another way is to invest directly in mining stocks, although the ASX does not have that many pure play copper stocks out there. Copper is usually found along with other metals such as gold, silver and zinc, which is not a bad thing since it allows copper miners to diversify. Now, one of the largest copper producers on the ASX is BHP. BHP also produces iron ore, nickel, potash and coal. BHP operates Escondida in Chile, the largest copper producing mine in the whole world. BHP also owns the largest copper mine in Australia, Olympic Dam. In financial year 2022, the company produced 1,600 tons of copper and it's recently been making significant investments to increase its copper output to keep up with rising demand. One way it's been trying to do this is through acquisitions. At the time of writing, BHP has made a proposal to acquire another big copper name on the ASX, Aussie Minerals. Rio Tinto is another important ASX copper stock. While Rio Tinto produces diversified materials such as aluminium and iron ore, it also manages one of the world's largest known copper and gold deposits located in Mongolia. Now, Rio has also recently partnered with Canadian company First Quantum to develop the Lagrange copper mine in Peru, the fourth largest copper project in the world. And Rio also owns a 55% stake in Resolution Copper, a large undeveloped project in the US, with BHP owning the remaining stake. Now, beyond producers, there are several companies scheduled to come into production over the next few years that could take advantage of the coming copper shortage. Just to be clear though, these are riskier as they aren't producing yet and a lot could go wrong. Now, one such company is Develop Global, which has ex Northern Star Resources chairman as its managing director. The company has two projects in its portfolio. One is Sulphur Springs, a copper zinc project in Western Australia. Another one is the Woodlawn Zinc Copper Project in New South Wales, which had been a producing mine for 20 years until the 90s. Heron Resources then poured 340 million into that before putting the mine on care and maintenance in 2020. Now, Develop's goal is to have the Woodlawn operational and ready in 2024, so not too far away. Now, another stock is Hillgrove Resources, Hillgrove owns the Kenman 2 copper gold mine in South Australia and ran an open cut mine at the site from 2010 to 2020. Now, after conducting years of drilling, Hillgrove thinks it's ready to produce copper from Kenman 2's underground mine. Hillgrove says it's fully funded and it's looking to produce its first copper from its new underground operations in 2024. Caravel Minerals is another copper junior, developing the Caravel Copper Project in Western Australia. According to the company, it's the largest undeveloped copper project in Australia and it's expected to reach first production in the second half of 2026. Just note that the companies mentioned here are not recommendations, they're just ideas to get you started in your research. Investing in mining stocks carries risks that you should be aware of prior to investing. So let's wrap up. What are the key takeaways? Well, copper is a fundamental metal for the energy transition and copper stocks could do well as demand for the metal is expected to rise in the next few years. And don't forget that copper is also a commodity, so it could be a great hedge against inflation. Of course, with copper tied to the health of the economy, there are risks, in particular if we go into a recession. But with copper demand rising, governments continuing to move into the energy transition and supply trying to play catch up, copper could be a great investment in the years to come. All in all, all great reasons to consider investing in copper.